Perhaps millions of people sharpen their tools by grinding them on a round wheel. It's not a new idea. Grinding wheels have been used for centuries. But as often happens on the modern internet, it's become trendy to overanalyze and pick apart long-held beliefs and claim that everyone has always been doing it wrong. I've heard many people do this, arguing that an edge sharpened on a grinding wheel will be more brittle or dull more quickly than one sharpened on a flat stone. The idea is that the edge will take on the shape of the wheel. For example, this CBN wheel on my bench grinder will create a curved or concave bevel, which is often called a hollow grind. Of course, this isn't a new revelation. Many people actually want that shape from their grinder, because as they return to a flat stone for their final honing, they can feel those two distinct points, the edge and the heel, more easily than they could a single bevel. And that makes it easier to find and hold the proper angle when you're freehand sharpening. And because only those two points are in contact with the stone rather than the entire bevel, less material has to be removed with your ultra-fine grits to achieve your razor-sharp cutting edge. Still, some people will argue that when you hollow out the bevel, you create a thinner, more brittle cutting edge. And looking at the drawings that they sometimes use to illustrate hollow grinds, you may be fooled into agreeing with them. But these drawings with their dramatic hollows are often greatly exaggerated. To really understand how a round grinding wheel will affect your tool, we have to take a closer look. This scale drawing illustrates a quarter inch thick chisel with a flat ground 25 degree bevel. And here is how it might change if that same 25 degree bevel was hollow ground on a six inch grinding wheel. If you used an eight inch grinding wheel, the difference in shape would be slightly less significant and a 10 inch wheel would be even less so. Now remember, we're talking about how that hollow changes the cutting edge. Its effect in the middle of the bevel is irrelevant to the edge's durability. That's just mass. The cutting happens down at the edge. And as you can see in this greatly magnified but still scale drawing, the actual change to that cutting edge is minimal. How minimal? Well, for the sake of discussion, let's focus on the effect of a six inch grinder wheel, since that small wheel will create the most dramatic hollow that you're likely to get from a bench grinder. And let's zoom in on the last 30 second of an inch at the tip of the chisel where all the cutting occurs. The loss of the blue portion of the bevel due to that hollow grind does appear to alter that cutting edge. My grinder's tool rest was set to 25 degrees, but the hollowing effect changed the angle at that very edge of the bevel to about 20 degrees. The steel at that critical cutting edge is, therefore, a little thinner. But here's the thing. Most tools are only rough ground to 25 degrees. After that, the final edge is typically honed on a flat, fine grit stone or other abrasive to 30 degrees. That forms a micro bevel along the cutting edge, which effectively knocks the end off that hollow grind and eliminates the thinning effect at the critical area. So because of this, a hollow grind would have no effect at all on the durability of a cutting edge if you, like most folks, follow up your grinder with a final honing on a fine grit flat stone. But maybe you don't do it that way. CBN wheels, for example, are available in very fine grits. Maybe you're all about power, you never use flat stones, and you don't create micro bevels. Will a hollow grind really weaken the edge that comes straight off the grinder? Well, this drawing illustrates a 30 degree grind such as you might create with a six inch wheel when you plan on taking the tool right from the grinder to the work. Again, the blue area represents the effect of the hollow grind as compared to a flat bevel, and the vertical divider represents the 30 seconds of an inch at the tip where the cutting is going to occur. That tiny sliver of blue near the tip tells us that this hollow grind does change the cutting edge slightly by reducing the angle at the point from the intended 30 degrees to about 27 degrees. This also slightly thins the steel, though the percentage of that reduction becomes infinitely less the closer you get to the edge. Still, we're often told that the optimal angle for performance and durability in most woodworking tools is around 30 degrees and 27 isn't 30. But consider this. Here I've made a minor modification to my setup, 
by merely bumping my grinder's tool rest angle from 30 degrees to 34 degrees. The blue area still represents the slight change caused by your 6 inch grinding wheel, but now the effective angle of the remaining steel at the cutting edge is back to 30 degrees, and any thinning effect caused by the hollow grind has been cancelled out. In simple terms, we made the edge thicker so we could make it thinner. Now some folks just like to argue, and I doubt this will end the debate entirely, but these scale drawings do tell me three things. First. A hollow grind has no effect on a cutting edge of a tool when the grinding is followed up with a final honing on a flat stone to add your micro bevel. Second, any thinning effect a hollow grind may cause to the cutting edge that will go right from the grinder to the work with no stone, no micro bevel, can be eliminated by merely setting the grinder's tool rest three or four degrees steeper. But in truth, this is only going to make you feel better. It's going to have little to no effect on the tool's performance based on my experience. The final point we can take from this study is that when you magnify a drawing, you blow things way out of proportion because here's the reality of a hollow grind. Perhaps that's the real lesson here. Tiny things can become big problems if we make them out to be so. Just because a problem may exist in theory, in internet debates, doesn't mean it will in actual practice when you put the steel to wood. If you want to learn more about CBN wheels and how they have completely changed the way I grind tools, I recommend you check this out. Some folks are a pleasure to work with, like Ken Rizzo over at woodturnerswonders.com. That's where I get my turning stuff, like sanding supplies and CBN wheels for my grinder. Seriously, if you haven't seen what CBN wheels can do for you, you are missing out. I'll put a link below this video. Use it and tell Ken I sent you.